Cousin, good evening to all viewers. Please join me as we pray. Father God, we come before you this evening, dear Lord, thanking you for, again, your goodness towards us. Dear Lord, as we embark on this series, Hope Through Crisis, we pray, dear Lord, that all viewers, all listeners, dear Lord, would open up their hearts to receive the message, dear Lord. Dear God, you have been good to us, even throughout this pandemic. Though times may be hard, and we sometimes worry about what the future holds, dear Lord, you have been our hope. We thank you and we continue to trust in you, dear Lord, to see us through. Dear God, as we start our program this evening, dear Lord, I ask that you bless the proceedings, dear Lord. May some hearts, dear Lord, be blessed this evening. Dear Lord, in a special way, I want to lift up our speaker for this evening, Pastor Patterson Moore. Dear Lord, a mighty man of your word, I ask, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit speak through him that the word that he brings, dear Lord, is clear and understandable by all viewing, all listening. Dear God, I ask that you help him to forget self, dear Lord, and just bring truth, that there may be no confusion, but dear Lord, at the end, someone would find hope. Dear God, I ask that even as we continue to trust in you, dear Lord, that we would each have a personal relationship with you, and come to know you, dear Lord, and in the end, be saved in your kingdom. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us now as I welcome the praise team. Let us sing and magnify the name of the Lord. Good evening, and welcome to our praise and worship session. Join us, sing along, and enjoy. of my spirit tonight rolls a melody sweeter than sound intellectual like shade it unceasingly falls for my soul like an infant I come peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the Father above sweep over my spirit forever I pray in father's pillows of love what a treasure i have in this wonderful peace very deep in my innermost soul so secure that no power can mine it away while the years of eternity roll peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the father Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in Father best pillows of love. Weary souls without gladness or comfort or rest, passing down the rough pathway of time. Make the Savior your friend, let the shadows go dark, oh, accept of this peace so sublime. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in Father West pillows of love. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in the Lord is my light, then why should I fear? By day and by night, His presence is near. The Lord is my light, then why should I fear? By day and by night, His presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin His blessed persuasion the Spirit brings in The Lord is my light, my joy and my song By day and by night He leads me along The Lord is my light, my joy and my song By day and by night He leads me along Forever in glory, not rain. Then how can I end? 
Good evening. I am truly blessed to be here on this platform. And I know you too feel the same. 
We have been having a wonderful experience. We've been having a grand time because God is love. And where there is love, there is peace, there is joy, there is happiness. There is a sense of comfort and hope that you don't want to leave. I want to take this opportunity to say welcome. A very special welcome to those who are here for the very first time. Maybe a friend invited you. I want to say a very special welcome to those who have been coming night after night. I know we have some visitors, and I want to say welcome to you. I want to say that God is interested in your well-being, and thank you for your time. You could have been doing something else, but you choose this opportunity, this platform, to be here to worship with us, and we say thank you. We have been experiencing the love of God. We have been hearing about his coming. We have been hearing about love through pain. We have been hearing about what is to come. We have been hearing about prophecy. Things that is to come. Things that we will experience. We have been experiencing the love of Jesus Christ. We have been experiencing what God has in store for us. So welcome, my friends. Feel at home. Feel relaxed. Feel free to praise God. Feel free to type amen. Praise the Lord because we are here to worship God. We are here to hear from him and he will not disappoint us. We have a man who God has anointed. A man who have a special love for God. A man who have a special love for the ministry. A man who have a special love for people. A man who have a love and a desire and a passion to witness to people because he want them to have that experience that he is experiencing. Now, I know this man personally. And he's a man you can go to and talk about anything. And that man is Pastor Patterson Moore. God has anointed Pastor Patterson Moore to preach the gospel. And he will do so. But before Brother Patterson Moore speak to us, Sister Renicia Mendoza will now come and bless our hearts in an item of music, followed by our praise team. And after that, we will sit back, relax, and feed on the word of God that is prepared for us. Who am I? The Lord of all the earth, who can I know my name? Who can I feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? Not because of who I am. Because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you've told me who 
I would like to say a pleasant good night to one and all. And I pray that tonight as we spend some time in God's word that our hearts will truly, truly be blessed. I know that God has a rich blessing in store for us as he always do. And I pray that we will all sit with our hearts open to receive that blessing. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory because you have been good to us. I pray that tonight that your Holy Spirit will continue to move and that hearts will be touched and lives will be transformed by the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I am thankful again to be able to share God's word with you. We dealt with the topic of God's inspired words. And tonight we are going to search, search through those words that were inspired, search through those words that is God's inspired gift to us. As we look around society today, we will often encounter situations where we have one of two choices. We always have to choose between the good and the bad. Between good and evil. These two choices continue to be with us. And many times we make the wrong choice because evil is often sugar-coated nicely and handed to us in a beautiful package. And I wish that we could have existed with only one choice, and that's the good. However, the reality of life is that there are two choices, and that's just a fact that we cannot get away from. But this idea of evil, which should make us uncomfortable, the inspired word tells us that this has an origin. As I love to quote, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I know with the assurance of history that we could go back to God's word and we could be able to discover things that we will not naturally know. And this thing called evil, the Bible reveals to us its origin. And one day, in God's creation, there was an unfortunate experience. And we can take up that story from the book of uh, uh, Isaiah. From the book of Isaiah chapter 28. And we will be reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 28. And reading from verse 11, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him thus said the Lord God thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty the author here Isaiah is saying he is using the king of Tyrus as a metaphor to describe this being don't forget tonight we are talking about this thing called evil we are going to discover that tonight, and he is describing this being. He said, thou sealest up the sum. It's like when you are doing mathematics in school, and they tell you, find the sum of something. It means the, the total, the grand total. And Isaiah is saying, this, in a description of this creature, he said, thou sealest up the sum. You are the grand total. He goes on to say, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Wisdom and beauty. I think we should take a note of that. It goes on to say, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. 
Now, many theologians believe that this quotation here that says that the workmanship of thy types and of thy tablets was made in thee in the day that thou was created is a re reference to his vocal cords. Because you see, the tablets was a four pipe instrument, and it is believed that this was used to describe, describe his vocal cords, that this being that was beautiful and full of wisdom and was described in the beauty of precious stone, it is saying here that this creature had the ability to sing four parts harmony, a full quartet. He had musical ability. Bible goes on to say, as we move on, it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it. And for those of us who do not know, the word cherub is an abbreviation for the word cherubim. And this creature now, in case we may be confused, is being revealed. This creature used to be a cherubim, and a cherubim is a special kind of angel, one of two angels that were at the side of, of God. They were the closest to God. And this creature that is described here as full of wisdom, as perfect in beauty, and this creature here that is described with the workmanship of his tablets and of his pipes were made in thee, this creature is now identified as an anointed cherub that cover it. And the Bible goes on to say, And I have set thee so. Thou was up and down the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. So keep in mind tonight that this creature is beautiful. This person, this anointed cherub is full of wisdom. This anointed cherub has the ability to make music with his melodious voice. And as we continue to study the scripture, it goes on to say in verse 17, Thou was perfect. In thy ways from the day that thou was created. So keep in mind that he was a created being. Till the till iniquity was found in thee. And that's verse 15, sorry. Verse 17 says, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. And thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. And as we saw in the beginning of the reading, it says, Thou sealest up the sun. He was really, really a beautiful creature, a creature that was well endowed. This anointed cherub was exceptional. And the Bible says that because of his beauty, he looked within himself and he found a reason to glorify himself. And as we continue to study that passage of scripture, dearly beloved, I have come to realize as I search through my Bible that this being became so beautiful and so lovely that he actually considered the idea and he passed it around to other angels and he was able to convince other angels and get the other angels on his side so that they could lobby so that he could take the place of God. The Bible says as he mustered up enough people, enough angels, sorry, on his side, he thought he was big enough. He thought he had enough support and he decided that he was well able now to overthrow God. We can pick up that story now in the book of Revelation chapter 12. He planned a coup. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. So that's an unusual thing to really happen because we think about heaven as a beautiful place, a blissful place. But the Bible tells us, and as I said before, and I want to quote it again, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And therefore, the Bible does not hesitate to tell us what took place. And it says that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So there was a war and this old dragon. And we may not be sure who the dragon is. But as we continue to read, it says, and that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. And Satan, which deceived the whole world, 
was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This being, dearly beloved, that is described as the anointed cherub, because of his rebellion, he moved his status from being an anointed cherub, and he became a dragon, a serpent. And he became one that loved war. And so he fought against God, but the Bible says that he prevailed not. The Bible says he was a created being. And the audacity of a created being to come to the conclusion that he could be greater or great as his creator. What audacity that is. The Bible says that he was cast out from heaven and his angels were cast out with him. And if we turn in our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12, tells us something. The question is asked, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of God of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The Bible exposes this great origin of this thing called evil. And the Bible shows, showed us that iniquity was found in him. And if we look at this passage of scripture, we will realize the monoton monotony of the eyes. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. There was too much I in Lucifer. As a result of self-centeredness, the Bible says he planned a coup and he failed. He failed. Revelation chapter 12 again. It says, rejoice, therefore rejoice ye heaven. Revelation 12 and verse 12. Of course heaven can rejoice now. For that opponent, that deceiver, was cast out. It said, therefore rejoice in heaven and he that dwell in them. But it goes on to say, woe, and woe means trouble. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has a short time. So the Bible reveals to us, my friends, that he was cast out from heaven and heaven was rejoicing. But it goes on to say, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And if we look very carefully, we will realize that we are living on planet earth. And while we exist on planet earth, we will have to continue to deal with the fact that there is a fallen being. And there is a host of angels, of fallen angels that came down with him. For the Bible declares that he was cast out and his angels were cast out with him. There are those of us who may not believe that he exists simply because we cannot see him. But I am telling you, dearly beloved, based on the word of God, that there is a being, there is a character. There is a being that used to be in heaven. That used to be worshiping God and he is cast out now. And he's walking to and fro in this earth. And if we look very carefully, we will recognize for the Bible shows us clearly in the book of Genesis chapter 3. From the moment he entered planet earth, Genesis chapter 3 records his naughty behavior. 
And we can pick up that story in Genesis chapter 3, where he came to the woman in the Garden of Eden, and he enticed her with his deception. He used his trickery and sophistry. And he spoke to that woman in the Garden of Eden and caused her to start to look at a sinful thing. He caused her to start to consider something that was forbidden. And she said these words. She said in verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and they did eat. There is an important point for us to keep in mind. Number one, we are dealing with a deceiver, someone who had the capability of deceiving angels in heaven. And so when he came on earth, telling beloved, he was able to speak to Eve because he is full of wisdom and he was also perfect in beauty and his voice was melodious. And he had the ability to speak to Eve in a convincing voice, speak to her to such a point with such influence that here Eve is now looking at that which it was forbidden by God and she is using positive description to describe that which was forbidden. And she said that she saw that it was good. And she saw that it was pleasant. And she saw that it was one to be desired. It's good. It's pleasant. It's to be desired. That which was forbidden by God. And if we look around society today, as we talk about that which is good and that which is evil. The deception in this world today is that evil often seem good. And evil often seem pleasant. And evil often seem as though it is something to be desired. We are talking about deception tonight. And so we know the story. Satan came in this full glory of diabolic behavior. And as he did what he did in Eve, the Bible says, because Adam and Eve sinned, we all are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but there is a hope, praise God. You see, the same Michael, the same Jesus, had promised that he was going to come. You see, the same Jesus that dealt with Lucifer, in heaven, the same Jesus that dealt with that rebellion, the same Jesus that war with him in heaven had promised that since he did his diabolical work on earth, he is going to come down on earth. And he said in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, he says, giving Adam and Eve a promise in the Garden of Eden, a promise that will resound throughout the centuries. He said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There was a messianic promise in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And Adam and Eve, with their sorrow, God came and gave them a promise. And he told them that the woman is going to have an offspring, that the, the, that divinity is going to touch down on earth, and divinity is going to fight that battle, that battle between Good and evil, divinity is going to come down as a seed of the woman. Divinity is going to come down and deal with this evil and the perpetrator of it. He said the perpetrator is going to continue his reign until he's going to bruise the heel. But if he also goes on to say, that the Messiah that is to come is going to crush the head of the Satan. Of, of Satan. Oh, dearly beloved, I am thankful to God for the prophetic word. I'm thankful for inspiration tonight that we don't have to group in darkness. For the Bible says that we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereon do we do well as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawn and a day star rise in your heart. I am thankful for the prophetic word tonight that we could look and we could see that God had given the prophecies and we could see that God fulfills his pro promises. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 7, 
and verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. I'm saying way back in the book of Isaiah, hundreds of years before it happened, Isaiah is prophesying. We're talking about prophecy tonight. We're talking about the prophetic gift and the accuracy of the prophetic gift. Isaiah is saying, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. What's the sign? We are looking for the sign. What is the sign? He goes on to say, behold, a virgin. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And I want to tell you tonight that when the, the, the Lord decided to give a prophetic gift, he could be so accurate that he was going to even name the child long before the child was born. And so he, the Bible says that he's going to give that child, that Messiah, that promise from Isaiah, from, from sorry, from Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. We are seeing all, even through the Old Testament, that that promise was given through inspiration. And so after Adam and Eve made their first child, they thought he was the Messiah because they believed in the promise. But as the century passed, Isaiah still prophesied, just as a reminder to the people that that promise was still to be fulfilled. And Isaiah chapter 9, and you can turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and reading from verse 6 and 7. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I want us to understand the depths of those words tonight. Isaiah is prophesying hundreds of years before that a child is going to come, a child that is going to be born of a virgin. The child's name is going to be called Isaiah. Uh, 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 the child's name is going to be called Emmanuel. The child is not just going to be a normal baby, but the child's title will be wonderful. Counselor, not just wonderful counselor, but mighty God, an everlasting father. That puts that child in a category that is different. This is not some preacher fabricating something tonight. This is the dust said the Lord. That child that is to be born is going to be divinity for those of us who are mixed up and tangled up by the amount of conspiracy theory concerning the divinity of Christ or who Christ is. The Bible clearly states that this baby that is going to be born is not just going to be called some common name. And people have given their children all sorts of names, all sorts of fancy names with nice little ring to it because you love your little child. So you give your child all these fancy names. But this child is given a name that is different. This child is given a name that is above all names. This child is given a name that is awesome. And this, 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 this inspired word is saying that this child is not just going to get a title, but this child is going to be called Mighty God and Everlasting Father. And we need to clear a space in our frontal lobe and get it etched in real good. Because in those days, you don't call somebody in the Jewish culture, the Jewish economy. You only ascribe God to God. You don't give a child that name. Just like that. And so that promise was given by the prophetic word. And as we continue to look at Isaiah, Isaiah was very, very clear on what he was saying. And we can turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 gives us some more information of that prophetic word. Isaiah 53 says, Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he had no form. This is a description now of what's going to happen to him. The Bible in the prophetic word describes that a virgin is going to bring a child. The Bible in its prophetic word is saying this is who the child is going to be. The child is going to be God. The Bible now says that he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. And he had no form, listen to this, 
no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. It goes on to say, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. I'm saying to you, dearly beloved, as we continue to study the prophetic word, we can see that God does not miss in his prophecy. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our iniquities. He was, for he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah prophesied hundreds of years ago that this was going to happen. Even back in Genesis, we are seeing that because of that war in heaven, this arch deceiver, this opponent of God came down and caused his mess on planet Earth. But there is always a promise from God. And I want to say to you tonight that this God whom I serve is mighty to save and strong to deliver. And I don't care if it is one or two or three or four evil angels. I don't care if it is Lucifer himself. Whosoever it is, when he stands as Michael, as Revelation 12 say, no demon can stand before him. We saw what he did to that, those demons in heaven. He cast them out because there was no place found anymore. And he came down on planet Earth. And I have the assurance tonight that for you and for me and for every single human being on this planet, if we put our trust in Michael, if we put our trust in him, and by the way, Michael means who is as God, who is describing Jesus himself. The Bible says, if we put our trust in him, Satan is no match for us. So, beloved, I'm grateful for God's inspired words. And so, as we turn to the book of Matthew now, because here it was prophesied in, 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 in the Old Testament. And as we turn to Matthew 1, Matthew chapter 1, we can see the fulfillment of this prophecy in Matthew chapter 1. It says, and he shall bring forth. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And verse 23 says, behold, a virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Just as Isaiah said. Which being interpreted is God with us. I'm saying to you tonight that when God makes a promise, and Peter says that God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness, but is long suffering towards, towards us. I'm saying to you tonight, if God told Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that he is going to send an offspring, he's going to send a seed, then God is going to do what he says he will do. And Luke chapter 2 and reading verse 11 says it nicely. I like how Luke says it. He says, for unto us, for unto you, sorry, is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is the fulfillment of the prophetic word. We can see it was promised and God came true on time. The Messiah came. The Messiah came. But Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 says that, 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 that the enemy of, of God is going to bruise the heel of, God, of, of Jesus. But the, uh, the prophecy also says that the Messiah is going to crush the head. He's going to bruise the head of Satan. Now I happen to have some, some experience in the medical field. And I've seen people 
who have had heel injury. There is something called calcaneal spur. That's people who have a problem with the, the heel. The heel bone is growing and can be very uncomfortable. And I've seen people who have gotten damage to their feet. I've seen people who got damage to their inst instep. I've seen people get damage to their heels. I remember once I saw a young boy who was playing his game and the ball went down in the bushes and he mashed a piece of iron and the iron, you know, a fence iron and the, 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 the piece of post was still in the ground and his foot was lodged in it and he was very scared and we had was to get up a uh, uh, hacksaw and cut out the piece of iron with his foot. And what I can tell you, dearly beloved, is there is a difference between that kind of injury and let me describe another one for you now. I've seen people with head injury. I've been on scenes where people have gotten their heads crushed. And what I can tell you is when you get your head crushed, there can be so much things can happen. There is something called intracranial pressure. There is something where, where the, the blood gathers inside the head and there's a space between the skull and the brain where the blood can gather and causes the brain to push down and cause problem in the brain stem. It's called intracranial pressure. And I can tell you that that can be fatal. And when I compare a bruised heel to a crushed head, I can understand the prophecy of Genesis 3.15 a little more. And it says that Satan is going to crush the heel of Jesus, but my Jesus is going to crush the head of Satan. And one day Jesus came and Jesus lived and he lived. And the Bible says everywhere he went, he was doing good. I'm talking about Jesus tonight. And the Bible says that he was wounded, he was bruised, he was beaten with many stripes. A crown of thorns was placed on his head. He was beaten, he was caused to tote the cross, and he was nailed to an old rugged cross. And Satan was rejoicing. Satan was happy because Satan, unlike many of us today who are saying Jesus is not God, Satan knew that he was God and Satan wanted to get rid of him because that has always been his plan to get rid of God. As he did his nasty work on that day on Golgotha, Golgotha as he allowed, as he influenced men to put the crown of thorns on Jesus' head, as he influenced men to, to, to beat him with many stripes, as he influenced men to, to stretch his hands out, and nail his hands and feet to the cross. He taught that he was inflicting a, a, a deadly blow. <laughs> but one, one day Jesus, after that Jesus was laid in the tomb. And he rested the first day. And he rested the second day. And Satan thought that he had him. But on the third day he came out from the tomb triumphantly. And Satan realized that the blow that he hit on Jesus was just bruising his heel. But when Jesus burst the tomb, Satan's head was crushed. He knew that it was up. That was it for him. He knew that his time was up. That's why the Bible says Satan knows that he has a short time. His destiny is doomed because of the resurrection. His destiny is doomed. It is already written in stone and he knows that. But anywhere he goes, he always like company. Just like how he deceived one third of the angels in heaven. When he came on earth, he is trying to get you and I to join his rank, to be lost together with him. Because he wants to just oppose God and win over all God's disciples as much as possible to burn with him. The Bible says to us tonight in Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God. That's our admonition to us. And what I like about the word of God, it reveals every aspect. It tells you the bad things that happen, but it also tells you how you can live righteously. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. That he may be able to stand against the wires of the enemy. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to tell you tonight that the Bible has revealed to us this great controversy between good and evil. We have the prophetic word so that we don't have to walk in darkness. We don't have to walk in uncertainty. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God, the Bible says in Psalms 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We don't have to walk by guess. We can know what is evil. But we can also know what is righteous. God has promised that if we read his word, we will be enlightened. And it is my admonition for us tonight that we will continue to walk in the way of the Lord. And if we walk in the way of the Lord, we are given the assurance that he is going to keep us. Satan's destiny is sealed. And we don't have to go down that road because there is a promise for us. In fact, when Jesus lived and was crucified and resurrected, he went back up to heaven and he left us an awesome promise. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Because if you believe in God and believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There is a promise. A promise to those of us who are living here with that choice between good and evil. There is a promise, there is a blessed hope that if we choose to be on God's side, all will be well. Listen to what he says in Psalms 91, reading from verse 1 to 4. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. And surely, that's a guarantee. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And the fowler is Satan. He will deliver you from the snares of the fowler. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth, and that's important for us to know, dearly beloved. His truth, his truth shall be our shield and buckler. I'm saying to you tonight, brothers and sisters. That there is a blessed hope. Yes, we have to always make that choice between good and evil. And those who may not believe that that exists, I'm saying, saying to you tonight that this is real. Satan is real and his plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. But the blessed hope is that Jesus came and he came to give us life and to give us it more abundantly. Would you say yes to Jesus tonight? I am saying to you tonight that if Jesus is offering you life, say yes. I also want to go so far as to say, if you are given the opportunity of eternal life, you have the, uh, the permission to be greedy about it. I don't normally recommend greediness. When it comes to righteousness and serving God, be hungry, be thirsty, be even greedy. See how best you can get this thing called eternal life. That's my admonition to you tonight to turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. And those evil things around us will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In the midst of the fact that we have good and evil. We have that as a reality. But I'm saying to you tonight, you do not have to be deceived. For God has sent us his words so that we can know what is right. And I'm saying tonight to you, I'm appealing to you tonight to choose Jesus. You could never go wrong. And if that's your desire, tonight to choose Jesus I want you to simply bow your heads with me as we have prayed Father in heaven thank you so much you have never failed us and so Lord we come before you tonight because we want to be saved and Lord as a preacher tonight I'm thinking of all those who are hearing all those who have never heard something like this before all those who didn't know that there was an evil and a being called Lucifer 
Satan, that old serpent behind all of this. I pray, O oh Lord, that they will get a clear vision now. But I also pray tonight that they will get a clear vision that there is a Savior called Jesus. A Savior who came and died. A Savior who resurrected from the tomb. He went all the way to death, to the tomb, and back. And he's now seated at the right hand of God. And he's going to come again to save us. I pray tonight that everyone who is listening will make that choice to be on his side when he comes. May you continue to bless us and keep us faithful until you shall come. This is my humble prayer with us given in Jesus' worthy name. Amen and amen. May the Lord continue to bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What I told you, God never disappoint. I want to thank Pastor Patterson Moore for allowing God to use him in a very mighty way. And I believe when God call a man to speak, he should speak the truth. And we could testify that what we heard tonight is the living word of God. The true word. Thank you very much, Pastor Patterson Moore. And I pray God continue to bless your ministry and that you would continue to allow him to use you. Brothers and sisters, my friends, God is a mighty God. We are on this platform today, this evening. But God wants to take us to a different platform and he has gone to prepare that for us I want to be there I want to see you there so I want to encourage each and everyone don't just take this goodness for yourself tell somebody about it tell a friend remember to subscribe remember to encourage somebody because we, the district, the separate district, we are interested in you. We want you to know about God. We want you to experience God's love and to be a part of what he has gone to prepare for us. And I know that we are living in a crisis, but we have hope in Jesus. We know about that hope and we want you to know about it. So this is what I want you to do. In the description box, go down, click on the link. You will see a form to fill out. We'll ask some questions because I know that people need prayer. I know that people need some encouragement. I know people need some counsel. You want somebody to talk to. You probably want a food basket. And God has called us to this purpose. This is our purpose to encourage, to support, to help. My friends, don't let this opportunity pass by. You want to talk to someone? You can call our pastor, Pastor Albert Brathwaite. His phone number is on the screen. You can call him at any time. Friends, do not let this opportunity pass you by. Take full advantage of it. Go Make a call. Tell somebody what is taking place here. And we look forward to see you again next week when God would speak to us at this time. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carry the cross love so amazing love so amazing jesus messiah name above all names blessed Thank you for 
Some 